Hello, everyone. Uh, we are live here at my place uh, with a huge stack of boards. Uh, we're about to start going through kind of a, a quick story time and uh, a breakdown of what the Utah Fuji Pro model is. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to hang out for a second while people jump on. I know a lot of people are uh, waiting to ask questions. I have some questions here from Instagram that we, we pulled, as well as some Discord and uh, YouTube questions. And uh, before we get to that, uh, I just want to say Utah Fuji is going to be going pro on the 18th. Uh, we've been developing a board with him for the last four years. Uh, he is one of my all-time favorite freestyle skateboarders, and uh, this is a huge milestone for, for Walt, um, for me personally, and I think for Utah. He's really stoked. So we're hyped to finally be able to put out this pro model, show what we've been working on. And there's a lot that went into this. So uh, November 18th, we'll have his new video part dropping, his pro video part, as well as uh, the new board's going to be going on sale here at Walt Skateboarding, uh, also at all of our vendors' sites. So um, if you're in Canada, at uh, Cal Streets, uh, at M80 in Japan, at uh, I believe Never Enough is going to be carrying them soon, uh, but also at the UK store for Walt's and... Um, Geez, I'm missing people. Who am I missing? Uh, out in Australia, we're going to have boards as well. Uh, San Francisco up in San Francisco already has the boards. But yeah, the 18th is a big day. But we'll get more into that later. Uh, I want to start by saying hello, every, everyone. Welcome. Um, Yuta Fuji, who is he? He is a freestyle skateboarder from Tokyo, or just outside of Tokyo. His father is Masahiro Fuji. Um, he is an incredible freestyle skateboarder in his own way. Um, he's somebody that I looked up to when I started freestyle skateboarding. Uh, he's kind of a hero to me and a lot of my friends learning to freestyle in the early 2000s. We met Utah when he was 10 years old. Uh, me and Daniel uh, were at the World Roundup and got to meet Utah there. Uh, he was just this little grom who was absolutely crushing it in the World Roundup and uh, <laughs> totally blown away. Um, in 2018, we went out to... Uh, Japan to uh, skate in the All Japan Freestyle Competition, which ended up being the World Championship, and we also skated in the King of Freestyle. And that on that trip, we actually went out and and turned well and put Utah on the Waltz team. We knew that he was kind of part of the crew already. He fit in perfectly with what we were trying to do, and uh, we just love Utah, so we wanted to put him on. And at that time, uh, Waltz was a totally different company, right? We were so much smaller. We were making one board shape called the Munster, and uh, not long before we went to Japan, we were making this board. We had gotten this sample board from our wood shop. This was like the earliest version of the Munster. So if you were skating a waltz board back in 2000 and, geez, 2016, right? 2016 to 2018 or 19, you were probably skating a double kick, either the, the, the Fuel, the Pilot, uh, the Prophets, or the Monument, and they were this shape. Uh, some of you out there are going to know about that. Let's see. Is the scene in Japan much bigger than the States, uh, anywhere else in the world? Anyone can answer, please. Uh, the scene in Japan, I think, is uh, a lot more condensed. Uh, I don't know if there are more freestylers, per se, than in the U.S. or in Europe or anywhere else, but it's definitely um, more dense. There's They're more close together, which helps a lot. I think that's also contributed to how fast people have progressed in the last uh, decade or two. Um, so this shape is a double kick freestyle skateboard. This was like the first thing we ever put out. It was 7.75 wide. It was a super long board or compared to most freestyle boards, the 13 and a half inch wheelbase. It was a big board. And at the time, this is what we gave you to skate. Uh, we had, we had a, a handful of these boards, uh, with a different graphic that we gave to him. Now picture Utah being a, she think he was 14 at the time or 13. He was a small kid. And we gave him one of the biggest free subboards in the market to ride, which was a mistake. Um, around that same time, uh, Utah was riding a mini street board. This is actually the board that he gave me when I was in Japan. It's got the FSCOM lettering on there. It's so sick. There's some Boss Baby stickers, FSCOM, Skate Kings gear. Uh, man, yeah, Murasaki, Murasaki Sports stickers. And of course, I have my little lettering of all the different dimensions of this board. Now, this is kind of a standard thing that you'd see in Japan at the time, which is a lot of skaters were riding mini street shapes. Um, this is just a popsicle stick board that's been worn down on the nose and tail from skating. 
and it's just a mini street board, like a kid's street board. Um, and this kind of is not far off from what a lot of people are riding in the States too right now. I think a lot of people are riding sort of smaller street boards. And um, we saw this and we're like, there's a lot of things that you can make better um, about this. You can improve. And from the start with Waltz, Daniel and I and everybody involved with Waltz wanted to make just better freestyle gear all across the board. So when we saw this, we're like, it's a good start. We know what he's comfortable with. We know what Utah wants to ride, but we're going to try to improve this. So shortly after this, I think a lot of you out there uh, saw that we came out with the Corgi. Uh, and a lot of people had this board. This was a hit in, geez, 2018, 2019 when it first came out. This is a double kick freestyle board, very similar to that double kick street mini that we were showing you a second ago. Uh, but it had super steep kicks. It was a six inch tail and nose, perfectly symmetrical silhouette where the nose and tail are the same shape. Uh, it's 7.5 inches wide, I believe. And it had this super shiny Corgi graphic, sort of like the descending Corgi, angry Corgi graphic. Uh, I miss that shape. I need that shape. <laughs> Yeah, so this was the first iteration. This was essentially like the first prototype we made for Utah. Um, it, we made it as a, a full production run because we just knew it was going to be a decent board. It's not quite a street double kick. It had more tapered noses and tails with a taper point that allowed for better rail flips. Uh, it had a slightly blunted end. It's really hard to see because it's so subtle. But it was a, an altered kind of version of a standard street shape. You can kind of see the taper a bit better if I hold it up like this. But it, it sort of angles in and narrows out more than you'd get out of a regular street board. Um, the idea here was to try to make something very similar to what Utah had been skating. However, to uh, kind of make it more freestyle friendly and just kind of see what would work for him. Let's see, I love the Corgi graphics. Shame I missed it. Ah. They're here and they're gone. That's always the case with our graphics. Like we only do really one run. And this one's special to me because it's got the autograph from Utah on there. This one's not going anywhere. Sorry, collectors. Um, so this was a good board for a lot of reasons. Uh, if you watch um, competition runs from Utah on this board, you can see that there's certain things on it. As I noticed these certain things on it that really didn't help him. Uh, it's a really steep board. You can see it's got very small kick gaps, right? and a very steep nose and tail. It's also not perfectly symmetrical. The nose, oh, yeah, the nose is a little bit steeper than the tail. It's not by much, but most street skateboards have slightly steeper noses and tails. Most molds out there these days for, for standard street skateboards or vert boards have steeper noses and tails. It's just how most boards are made. Doesn't really help for freestyle. So uh, you just skated this for a while, came back to us and said, okay, it's a little too steep, uh, it's a little too small. He's also going through a growth spurt at that time. So we go back to the drawing board and we're like, we're going to make the Corgi 2. So some of you out there are going to remember the Corgi 2. Let's see, was there a specific dream trick combo in mind for Utah when you guys came up with that shape? Uh, with that shape, not so much. He wasn't necessarily skating or doing dream tricks. I think a lot of it was he needed to be able to do truck stands comfortably. He had his Utah spins, the, the tricks where you're spinning off the tail of the board and uh, spinning the board around. I wish I could cut away to videos of this, but if you've seen you test skate, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, a lot of footwork that involves stalling on your back wheels and like fakey spacewalks, it's tough. So we came back from that board, the Corgi one, with these uber steep, uber small kicks, and we designed the Corgi two. Now this is a uh, European made one. This is one that we made with Never Enough. That was an, a second prototype. Uh, this is slightly wider. It was 7.6, I believe, wide. It had slightly mellower kicks. Um, and if you skidded the American version, which I actually don't even have any more of those, it had almost no kick tail. It had like very little kick on the tail. And that worked better. Uh, we, we realized that um, a lot of the tricks that Utah and a lot of freestyle skateboarders that we knew were doing required a much mellower kick tail and a larger kick gap. And uh, once we figured that out and we kind of went back and forth with, with Utah on designs, uh, that kind of gave us a good starting point for developing his pro board. Now, this board came out in, geez, 2019, 2020, right before the pandemic. And if you all remember, things got real weird when uh, we first went into lockdown 
in terms of getting boards made. I mean, the whole world was turned upside down, but uh, things got a little spicy for Waltz trying to make skateboards. And after this board came out, uh, we discontinued the Corgi altogether. So let me set this down. So that's 2020. Uh, and then we, at one point we were pressing or we were printing our own boards in house. Uh, I know we were pretty vocal about that on YouTube and on Instagram showing like live streams of boards getting printed, all of that. And uh, it, it was a wild time to keep boards in stock. But the whole time, while we were getting our little our, our, our print studio set up, while we were trying to keep wheels in stock, buying wheels from everyone we could, uh, in the background, I was getting boards made with Bo Trufiro at, at Open Source. We were prototyping new molds. We realized that we could make our own molds for freestyle boards. We no longer had to be stuck with asymmetrical molds or steep tails. We could actually develop our own our own geometry for skateboards. And uh, I've been tinkering for a long time. We were going back and forth with Utah and Masahiro, and uh, things started to get a little interesting. I'm going to go to questions real quick before I move on. Um, Japan is the future of skateboarding. Tampa M is, uh, <laughs> yeah, is on. Japan dominates. They're killing it. A lot of, there's a lot of Japanese freestylers and skaters across the board who are just absolutely ruling right now. Um, uh, I missed that one too. The kick gap on the purple corgi is massive. Yeah, so a lot of people who are skating the purple corgi uh, really had a hard time with that. It's something that I, um, yeah, something that I, I, I really felt bad about in some ways that we put out there. Uh, it worked really well for Utah. But I know a lot of people struggled with the asymmetry of that board. Um, now we talk about symmetry. I want to be clear about this. Uh, symmetry refers to the shape of a board's nose and tail usually. So in terms of the original Corgi, this is a symmetrical profile. So it has a nose shape. So the, the outline of the nose is exactly the same as the outline of the tail. Now, it's very rare to find a board in the market these days that has a nose shape in terms of the profile and also the kick that is symmetrical. So that's to say that if there's a 12 degree upturn on the tail here, there's also a 12 degree kick on the tail. Um, oftentimes, like I said, the nose is steeper than the tail. So going into the next chapter of developing Utah's pro model, we really wanted to make something that was perfectly symmetrical. And he wanted that too. Um, so we went back and forth. We were prototyping a ton of boards. And literally like three years later, right, um, we landed on one that we think we were really happy with. And it was pretty big. Pretty excited about this. So. This is the board that I actually just finished skating. It is the Twin Tail, and it is the latest, uh, I guess, one of the latest sample prototypes of Utah's Pro model. And this is a round-ish, but still somewhat blunted end, double kick, symmetrical board. You can see the difference here between the steep kicks of even the Corgi 2. I lay this on top with the kicks of the twin tails. Hard to see, frame it up, Mike. Hard to see all that well, but the top board is uber steep concave and uber steep kicks. This one here has about 12 degree kicks, extremely mellow kicks, cub concave, and perfectly symmetrical. That's to say that the profile of the nose and tail are the same and the kick angle is the same. This was where we realized we kind of hit right on the money. Uh, this board was something that we made just before Utah came out to visit, actually. Uh, in 2021, I was talking to Masahiro about doing a spring break trip with Utah, or summer break trip with Utah, rather. And I never thought it was really going to happen. But in uh, September of this year, August, August of this year, Utah came out and visited, and it was really rad. Uh, <laughs> he was able to stay out here for an entire month. I got to hang out with him every day. We skated. We talked about what he wants to do with his career and his future. I mean, this kid's eight or 16, and he's already ha he already has so many plans for what he wants to do on his board and uh, with his life. And it's really cool. But let's see. Oh, so he came out riding a board that was very similar to this one right here. Obviously, Utah has the board that I'm talking about right now, but it was very mellow. Uh, it had um, radial concave. 
And the radial concave was even mellower than like the Bixby board, for instance. If you're riding a Bixby 7.6 or 7.4, it's got really mellow concave. And the, sim the skateboard that Uto was riding was very similar to that. Now, uh, fresh off the bat, when he got uh, to California, we're skating it. He's like, everything about this board is great. He liked the, the really mellow kick angles, but he didn't like the concave. So we went to Bo Trefiro and we got this made. This is the cross section of the updated concave for the Utah Fuji twin tail. It, uh, now, if, if you saw the Braille video that we had with the twin tail where Utah show, showing off and talking about his board, this isn't the concave that was on that board. He was riding a radial super mellow concave. This, for all the nerds out there, is like a tub radial hybrid, something that Bo cooked up at open source skateboards. And it's got a flat pan down the center. So if you see, there's kind of like a section down the middle that's fully flat. There's a low point in the center. This is the lowest point on the board, the bottom of uh, the, the rocker. So there's a rocker on this thing. And then it's got ramps, ramped edges on the side that will hug your foot when you're standing on it like this. So this here is the magic of Utah Fuji's new board. This is a tub radial hybrid concave, which gives you more of the stability and rigidity of a street concave, like a street skateboard. But you still have a flat section in the center so that your foot can comfortably do walk the dogs and space walks and footwork and turn backs and walk the cows and all the tricks that you do when you're doing footwork. It's all the stuff that Yuta does when he's dancing on his board. So we got this made to test out a new concave. And this is what led us to the final board and the board that you're going to be able to buy on the 18th and try out. Oh, yeah, it's the cross section super rad, right? Like we were stressing because like we can't make a whole new board while Yuta's in town. And Bo's like, we're just going to 3D print you. Uh, your own little sample to try out. But here's the big moment, y'all. So, you mentioned what? There was the Corgi, the Corgi 2. There's the original board, the, the Munster that you just started skating. Oh, geez, there were probably like seven or eight boards altogether that we, like board designs that we went through over the last four years. And uh, through that time, Yuta grew and developed in his skating and, and picked up new tricks that we had to accommodate. And uh, it's been really cool, actually. But this all led us to the Yuta Fuji Twin Tail. Hyper mellow, double kick, rocker, freestyle board, upside down. With this crane graphic, it's the first time anyone's going to be seeing it. So graphically, we got the crane, rising sun. We have the Utah Fuji name, cherry blossoms. This was a request specifically that Utah had to have on his graphic. And of course, the, the two birds, because it's the twin tail. Yeah, we thought this was a really good representation of Utah. I mean, it's it's like the a very graceful bird, something beautiful. For, uh, for a kid who's skating is, is light on its feet. It's not always super aggressive, which we love. He's a dancer like us, and the board represents him. And he can skate it really well. Uh, but like I said, it's a tub concave, similar to the Huntington. However, it's way steeper at the edges. So you'll still feel it more under your feet. Um, it's built kind of a little bit more like a traditional street skateboard. However, um, you have these mellow kicks. Whereas a street skateboard is usually 18 to 20 degrees in the kick, these are 12 degrees. So it's much lower. And you can kind of see the difference here, how mellow that kick angle is compared to like your average street skateboard. Framing is hard. Anyway, you get the gist. So the kick tail angles are exactly the same. Kick tail and kick nose are both 12 degrees. Uh, it features a tub radial concave, sort of a hybrid concave, like I mentioned, to give you that flat pan down the center. So basically, there's a, a two-inch section down the center of the board that is completely flat with ramped edges to give you that sense of concave and that sort of stability and rigidity that you get from a bigger street board. It's also got a rocker. So the center of the board is about uh, an eighth of an inch lower than the rest of the deck. 
meaning that the board will spin more consistently because it's going to have this, this axis, sense of axis in the center. It'll also be a spot where your foot will, will fit and sit comfortably in when you're doing walk the dogs. I find that walk the dogs feel a lot more comfy on this board than on other freestyle boards that I've skated. And it also has that center top graphic. So if you want to cut out a circle, you can do that. Um, it's got slightly blunted nose and tail shapes. So you can put two waltz tail skids on the nose and tail of the board, hence twin, hence twin tail. So instead of doing a nose skid and a tail skid or two nose skids, it's two tail skids. What else? Taper points. It does have slight taper starting about here, which means that um, you can still roll the board over in rail flips. However, it's not going to fully roll because you have a more blunted end. It will still bounce off the ground and give you a little bit more height than you would get from like a standard street board. This is not a mini street board by any means. I think a lot of people are going to see this and think, oh yeah, it's the same thing as a popsicle. It's not. This thing is a jet fighter of a freestyle board, something that Utah Fuji has been developing with us for four years. And uh, we're stoked. Built it from the ground up, brand new mold, brand, brand new silhouette, brand new graphic that we've been trying to keep totally under wraps for a really long time. And I think people are just now getting to see it, hopefully. And yeah, we're really proud of it. So I'm going to set this behind me if I can. It's probably going to fall into the little gap here behind my, my couch. I'm going to answer some questions. Which way am I going? Oh my gosh. Um, so I had a lot of questions on Instagram. I wanted to get through that quick little story time about the board before I, I dove into more. But let's see. Live questions. Uh, is you the first Walt skater to have a pro model? Uh, by pro, I mean, is he the first to have his name on a board? Yes. So Utah is the first pro on Walt skateboarding. Um, I, from the start, did not want to give myself a pro model. It felt inappropriate. Um, I've had a pro model in the past in other companies, but um, we wanted to turn somebody pro and do it the right way. Uh, I'm going to have like a little blog post about Utah when this board comes out on the 18th. But to me, uh, a pro is somebody who like is is contributing to the freestyle community in a in a serious way and uh also has a board that they're making an income from and competing in contests that they're making money from and we wanted to get to a point with waltz where we could afford to do that where we could give him a pro model that he was proud of that was all his his mold his concave his shape his graphic and also give him royalties for it so he will be the first person that is doing that on waltz. Dimensions. I never talked about dimensions. Can you believe it? I got really excited. Excuse me. I got really excited about uh, the concave. I totally forgot that. So this is a 7.75 inch wide deck. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than the 7.6, but you'll still be able to ride Ace 11s or Bullet 120s or the blank trucks that we have, the 7.6 blank trucks. Uh, what else? Really, any four and a quarter truck will fit this well with Walt's freestyle wheels. The wheelbase is 13.1. So it is a little bit bigger than the Big Spee, um, a little bit longer, but shorter than the first board, the Munster that we had. So 13.1 wheelbase, six inch nose, and a six inch tail. What else? It's funny, there's fewer uh, dimensions to mention because the tail and nose are the same. I'm used to being like, over here rattling off dimensions. Uh, I don't remember what the concave drop is, but it is a 12 degree kick for the nose and tail. There's about a finger and a half of flat behind each truck. So it's a pretty uh, immediate truck or kick angle, but it's a very mellow kick to give it more a sense of like responsiveness versus those really flat, really big kick gaps that you have on other boards. Well, Indy 109's fit. No, Indy 109s are going to be too narrow. Indy 109 is going to be about a 6.9 inch truck. You're going to want something one size bigger. So like the Ace 11s are a great choice for that. Um, bullet 120s, if you don't want to spend as much on, on trucks, bullet trucks have a 120 size that will fit that. Uh, what about a bullet 125? I don't know about the bullet. I don't know what the bullet 125s are, but I'll look into that. Um, feel free to email us if uh, I don't get back to you about that. Um, so does the rocker work if uh is it thinner veneers or how does the rocker work 
uh, is it part of the concave? So the, the rocker is actually part of the concave. It's part of the mold itself. Um, the board isn't profiled, so it's got the same thickness across the entire deck. But um, the way the concave works is that the, the deck actually slopes down from the start of the, the pan, you can say, basically where, where the trucks are, down to the center. And there's a low point, and then it slowly ramps back up to the other truck. You can kind of get a sense of it here. Um, it's, this is a terrible way to visualize it. Uh, but this square in the center here is actually the lowest point of the board. This is like where your foot is pivoting for walk the dogs. And uh, you'll see a very subtle ramp up this way. If you could extend this cross section out a bit farther, uh, you'd see it ramp up to the other edge. Um, but no, nothing is nothing is actually profiled or thinned out from the center of the board to the outer edge. It's just that there is a drop. There's sort of like a bow shape, though a very subtle one in the board. The overall length of the board is, oh, math. I don't go by length. 13.1 uh, plus 4.2 plus 12. Uh, 12 plus 13.1. That's uh, 25.1 plus 25, 29.3. I should be better than that, but yeah, 29.3 inches long. Uh, <laughs> put me on the spot. 29.3. Everyone's asking for length. Math face. Hey, sorry, girl. I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> All right, when, how much, how many are in stock right now? We have a lot in stock. Um, we have a lot in stock and more coming in soon. But right now we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna have them on sale on the 18th here at waltzskateboarding.com at Waltz UK, uh, our web store in the UK. We'll have them in Canada, hopefully in Australia very soon. Uh, Europe, we're still waiting to hear from Europe, but the UK, we will have them there, I just mentioned that. Japan will have them. Uh, who else? If you have a local skate shop, ask them to carry this board. We are doing wholesale. So if you have a skate shop, we want this board in shops. We want to be able to support your scene. Uh, but it's a, it's a tough battle sometimes when people are so used to only seeing Para Wellander Powell boards all the time. They don't know these things exist. So if you have a local shop, ask them to carry waltz. Um, let's see. Go back to the answers. So how does the rocker work? We talked about that holding. Come on now. You better have enough. <laughs> yes, we're in a much better place than we were a year ago, even when we were trying to print boards on the fly. Ethan, what's up? Thoughts on symmetrical freestyle boards? Pretty sure this is the first one I've seen you make. I used to hate symmetrical freestyle boards. Um, the biggest thing I hated about them was that they were never actually symmetrical. Even if we tried to make a symmetrical freestyle board, either molds were hard to drill on to make symmetrical, uh, like if you had a symmetrical mold, getting it aligned symmetrically is hard. Uh, aside from that, having a uh, mold that's symmetrical is really hard to find, and we weren't able to make our own molds. When I say molds, I mean the actual like tools that allow you to press this sort of concave into a board. Because when you press a skateboard, you have a top half and a bottom half, and they both sort of create this bend in the board. Now, it's difficult. It has been difficult in the past to make a custom like mold, custom tools to make this shape. So most freestyle companies in the past, most skateboard companies in the past uh, have used existing molds, boards, board molds that have been around for years that people made back in the 80s or 90s, or early 2000s to press their own boards. Uh, it's just recently that a lot more freestyle companies are starting to make their own custom molds and custom tools to press our own boards. And this Utah is actually a great example of that. Um, we started doing our own with the Huntington, that was the first time we made our own concave. And this Utah board here, the Utah Fuji Twin Tail, is uh, our first time making a fully symmetrical board. Now, because we can make it perfectly symmetrical with the same kick angle, same concave, same profile, it allows us to make it how I want it. And I'm just really picky. <laughs> Do you happen to find any tricks surprisingly easier on this shape? Great question, Sean. Uh, and I think you, you asked that before with, with Utah as well. Um, I find that uh, 
a lot of footwork is easier. Um, I really enjoy Mirage Twist, Spacewalks, um, being able to do footwork without thinking about where my feet are. So like I can do one walk the dog and then a switchblade and not have to worry about which direction my board's pointing. It's always the same, right? It's a symmetrical board. The nose and the tail are identical. Uh, the, <laughs> there's, I, I find tr some truck stands a lot easier. I know Utah loves his truck stands. He's got his sand flips, his no-handed fan flips. Uh, he just figured out his dad's Masahiro Casper thing, which blows my mind. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to Instagram, look up Yuta Fuji. He just posted it and it's just bonkers. Um, some truck stand tricks have been easier. Uh, I love the rigidity of it for coconut wheelies because the board has more torsional rigidity. It doesn't corkscrew as much as like a, a like lower concave board. You can kind of pull it into coconut wheelie a lot more quickly, I guess. Uh, yeah, and it feels really good rolling. Like rolling tricks just feel good under your feet because so, it's such a wide, longer, stable board. Um, it suits a lot of the tricks that Utah does. And really when it comes to shove it variations, ollie flip variations, and truck stands, that's Utah's bag. Um, so if you like that kind of stuff, check it. I'll bet shove it moves are easier with the twin tail balance. Exactly. So if you if you think of like, Utah did that video of how many ways you can shove it. And it's like nollie big spin straight into fakey big spin straight into 720 nollie shove it. Hello. Can everybody hear me? Let's see. <laughs> it's too powerful. They said, oh, that's great. <laughs> All right. Uh, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? I got one spam call and uh, it was like, nope, you're not getting back on, on, the, on the YouTube live. Sorry, folks. That was spicy. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we're back. Uh, and <laughs> all right, so going back to some questions, we had a bunch of people asking questions on our Instagram. I want to get to those real quick. Um, so one was, how does it differ from other boards on Waltz? So other decks from Waltz. So we talked a little bit about some symmetry and what a fully symmetrical board is. Now we'll talk about the least symmetrical board at Waltz. So this is the Huntington spoon nose. This is a spoon nose freestyle board. It's got a very slight upturned kick nose with a regular tail. A tail that's actually steeper than the Utah. It's got tub concave and it has a shape, a profile that's also asymmetrical. So it's a very square tail. This is the kick tail. And then that slight upturned nose is very round, right? It's tapered, it's shorter, it's rounder. Now, this board is a more classical, traditional freestyle board, sort of similar to what you saw in the 80s um, with modern features. So it has that tub concave, like we mentioned. It's got a modern construction with thinner veneers. And uh, I think this is sort of like the opposite of the Utah, right? It's also a smaller board. This one comes in 7.6 and 7.4. Move this over so we can, we can frame things well because we're professionals. Uh, uh, but did you renew your car's warranty? I did. Yeah, all all during that little breakdown, we fully did it. Um, any sirens in seven six coming? Oh, we are working on it. Uh, we had those just get totally ripped out from under us so fast. I'm so sorry. Uh, but that brings me to another point. So the siren is also a double kick. This one is closer to symmetrical 
where it has uh, the same angle kick in kick in the nose and tail. However, the shape itself, the profile of the board is directional. It's got a square tail and a more round nose. Now, this is also much steeper in the kicks than the Utah. Uh, this has a 17 degree kick tail and nose, whereas the Utah has a 12 degree kick tail and nose. Um, so if you're riding the Bigsby right now, you might find that the, the Utah, the twin tail from Utah Fuji, is actually a really great fit for you. It might uh, be what you like more than the Bigsby, since it's got mellower kicks, better for truck stands, better for pogos, and with the symmetry of it, you don't have to think as much about which direction your board is pointing. Uh, but we are working on getting these back in stock as well. Just got to bear with us while we wait. Sorry, folks. Let's see, love a spoon nose, so good for truck stands, truck tricks and Caspers, I agree. Yo, what's up, I'm here. Yo, what's up, welcome in. Uh, Mike went to freestyle jail. Only for a second, I'm back. Come on. Uh, da, 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 da. Can we get a Dan Garb pro model next? Maybe in the future, uh, I, I don't know. We, we gotta put Dan on the team officially. But we love Dan, he's the best. Uh, any plans on selling a premium complete with everything Utah actually rides? Uh, so right now, um, the pro model, the complete that you're going to be able to buy from Walt Skateboarding is going to come with almost everything that Utah rides. Uh, it's going to have Ace 11s. It'll have Walt's um, deep space wheels. It will have uh, blah, 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 independent bearings um, and black magic grip tape, as well as Walt's tail skids. It'll be retailing for around $189.99, so it'll be a little bit less expensive than the, uh, or it'll be a, priced slightly lower than the Huntington Spoon Nose Complete Pro, uh, but it'll be everything that Utah actually rides, aside from, I think sometimes he rides uh, never or M80 bearings. I think sometimes he rides bearings that we, we can't actually get out here, so we put on Andy bearings. Let's see. What size trucks are needed for the Utah? So if you're riding freestyle wheels, specifically Waltz wheels, I recommend the uh, Ace 11s. We will sell the completes with Ace 11 trucks as well as, uh, oh, we'll swap out bushings too. I would recommend doing a hard bushing. We do the extra hard dodos for all of our completes, just a more stable ride. Uh, if you are looking for other trucks, I think Ace 11s, I think I mentioned before, Bullet 120s, you should also be able to get I think, Thunders in a freestyle size. You would just have to use, again, an offset wheel. The Waltz freestyle wheels are a great pick. Will completes still be showing the top graphic? Uh, ooh, or will they be gripped over? Those will be gripped over. Um, you can ask, we can try if you ask to, to change that up, but uh, we will be defaulting to fully blacked out grip. I recommend doing a custom grip job on all your boards. Buy all your stuff separate. Do a custom grip job. Make it yours. Don't rely on a complete. Just make it how you would make it. That's what freestyle is about. Uh, are you still doing a video on bushings? I need to. Uh, da, 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 da. Bushings, there's so much to it, but also there's such a strange bushing world right now. I miss Cairo. Uh, oh man, here come the spams. Here we go. Uh, on the top graphic boards, so if you. Uh, a deck, just a hand glory. Yeah, uh, we'll get back to that in the future, but talked about that later. Let's see. So more questions from everyone in the Instagram chat. Uh, so one person asked, uh, when will they be available at the UK or Never Enough Germany? So our UK Walt store is going to have them as early as next week. Um, uh, by the 18th, hopefully. If not, we will be available shortly after that. Um, well, let's see, Never Enough. Uh, we're still waiting for Never Enough to place an order, but we are working with Never Enough to get more of our boards there. Uh, right now, it's tough to get boards to Europe, but we're doing everything we can to get them there. Um, Ace makes a hard bushing. Your thoughts? Not hard enough. You need to go harder than that. Uh, you'll need to rock either uh, deluxe extra hards or uh dodos or oh man venom has a hard bushing that is decent i think that's over like 99a or 98a but i believe the hard bushings from ace are still like a 95. they're not very hard for freestyle we have just different standards for hardness in freestyle we're way up there um what else 
skills. Oh, how's the flex and rigidity? Um, so if you are used to riding something like the Huntington, uh, there is a little bit of flex in the Huntington center. Uh, that's because of just the way the concave is, is formed and how the board is built. Uh, this, because it has a steeper concave, is going to flex slightly less. However, with the, um, with the rocker, we do find that there is a little bit of flex when you're pulling the board upright into truck stand and stuff like that. Um, I don't find that it's a detriment, um, but yeah, you might find that it is a little bit, has a little bit of like a bounce to it. Um, I like it. I like it, especially for rolling tricks. You'll have to let us know what you think. Uh, maybe add a button on your website to buy complete unassembled. Interesting. I like that. Hmm. Freestyle needs to go hard in the paint. Yes. Uh, that's a great idea. We may actually offer that in the future. I'll let you know. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of things we want to try to update with the, how you can buy a freestyle board. So we will keep you updated. Let's see. More questions. Um, yeah, I think that kind of covers most of it. There's so much that went into this board. Uh, this is four years of tinkering and going back and forth with everybody. Um, let's see. I mean, I, I, there's really, we could, we could go all day talking about all the, the different struggles that we had trying to get a board made. Um, skateboards are hard to make and freestyle boards, making something new in freestyle skateboarding uh, has become easier than it ever was. That doesn't mean that it's easy by any means, but we're super fortunate to have people to work with like Bo Trefiro, wood shops that are willing to work with us to make more creative things and, and more specialized products for freestyle. And people with open minds out here like you all who are willing to like, I don't know, listen to this live stream and like consider the fact that this isn't just a street board. Because most people see a skateboard and they're like, whatever, I can kick flip anything. But we are out here trying to make something that's tuned for freestyle. The tricks are different than they were in the 80s, and they're different from your average street skateboard tricks. And if you don't have a board that's built for it, uh, you're kind of doing a disservice to yourself, I believe. So uh, it's been really exciting to, to make new stuff and hopefully push people to improve their skating and, and push themselves. Hope you like it. Um, we take a few more questions, and then I think we're going to probably sign off, clean up this mess of skateboards. Uh, and then go film some people skating the board out at our Sunday session. Um, throughout the process of working on Waltz's first pro model, uh, what are, what was the thing that got you most excited about working on these projects? I think it's, it's cool to see how fast you can iterate, um, things like, like the, the concave changes or, um, Things like being able to press boards on foam molds with Bo Trefiro and make uh, quick changes to boards. Uh, when we're able to do that, you get feedback quicker. And when it comes to getting a board to Utah and seeing what he thinks, it's like immediate. Like you can send, I can FedEx a board to Japan, get it under his feet. And the next weekend, we have an update on what he thinks. And if we're lucky, it's a video of him laughing skating a board. That's cool. That's a really cool feeling to have when you see a rider riding something and like visibly enjoying it. Um, yeah, I think also coming back from Utah's back injury, he had back surgery in December and he was back skating and we could make a board for him in no time. I didn't even mention that in this whole uh, storytelling moment, but uh, it was really cool to see him come back and be able to skate a board he was happy with uh, when we were all kind of wondering if he'd ever skate again, to be completely honest with y'all. Uh, the blender graphic, all coffee beans enhanced. That's so funny. I'd love that. Um, how do you drink your coffee? And there should be a well to blend coffee. I'd love that. Uh, black. I drink a black straight out of the French press. Boring. Love it. Uh, will the Utah be stocked indefinitely? Yes, we're going to do everything we can to keep it in stock forever. Um, if not, the Utah crane then we're going to have some iteration of the twin tail the twin tail will be a shape in our lineup um, along with the huntington and the bigsby you want to be a three-shape company you want to have three core shapes that evolve over time but if you like a shape we don't want to take it away from you anymore we're doing our best to keep stuff in stock and a lot of people out there is trying to skate the bigsby we're bringing it back we're working on it sorry but uh yeah we're going to try to have these stick around for you um, 
Ooh, can you please do large stickers for this new Utah Pro model? Uh, yeah, you want to do like like eight by fifteen, like extra large. We were just talking about that. Maybe we'll do like wheelbase size stickers, so you can just put it over your existing graphic of your board. <sighs> um, it's awesome. Thank you, John. Um, um, um. The next Friday, I'm going to be refreshing your site all day. So for anybody who is going to be doing that, 2 p.m. California time, 2 p.m. Pacific time on Friday, that is when it's happening, the 18th. We're going to have Utah's Pro Model going live on the website. We're going to have Utah's Video Park going live on the website. You can check with our vendors as well. If you're in San Francisco, go to San Francisco. You can get them right now, actually. You can sneak in and buy them in the, the San Francisco Hate Nashbury store. Uh, I'm a little envious of them. Uh, and then uh, she got your local skate shop and asked them for it. He just seems like the best of everything. Please, size 12 shoes, uh, 775, 74, hard, hard for the feet. Uh, I agree. I, I like having a larger board than the 74 sometimes. And uh, the 775 feels really good, especially if you're, you're approaching things from more of a rolling style. Uh, let's see. Fitting over the board, yes. Um, wow, there's so many questions I wish I could get to right now. Uh, I think the board has the Venoms. Oh, your board has the Venom bushings. Yeah, so Venom bushings are a great option. Um, if you want to get the 98As, uh, they are conical, so they're a different feel than like a cone plus barrel bushing, but that's a different video. We could go on all day about that. Um, love the spoon nose. Thanks, Ethan. Uh, what happened? Ha ha ha. Yeah, that was a, that was a messy stream. Sorry, y'all. I don't know what broke down there. Um, let's see. Danny AI and Sean Burke need a waltz model. <laughs> One day, I hope. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we need to make more pro models. I think, I think there's more in the lineup. Thanks for the stream, dude. Uh, always love hearing your thoughts on shapes and design. You're awesome. Thanks, Ethan. It's good to have you on here. I mean, Ethan, I'm talking about freestylers and people who are, who are doing a great job. I think we have an amazing team at Waltz. Um, I feel so fortunate to have uh, opportunities to give boards and, and make things and work with people like Utah and also people like Ethan Young, who's on the team, and Rihanna Gregore. Uh, we've been flowing boards to Dan Garb um, and other friends of ours. It, it's really cool to have friends that I can work with and make things with. And like I said it since I started making YouTube videos, my friends are like the coolest part of doing this. Like whether it's a video or a board project, it's the fact that we all get to work together on this stuff that it makes it really cool. So hope we still get to do this in the future. We're so excited for everybody to try out this board and just to see it, be able to hold it and see all the work we put into it. I think it'll come through, but all right. I'm gonna head off. This has been a lot of talking. I'm gonna lose my voice. But thanks, everybody, for top, hopping on, saying, hey, we'll have more opportunities to ask questions and a lot more stuff about this board coming up in the next week. But uh, tune in on the 18th at 2 p.m. for his video part, Utah Fuji's video part and his board release. Keep being good to each other. Keep dancing. <laughs>